Take a guess, how far away from the Earth is this galaxy? It's actually 425 million light years away. And yet, in this Hubble Space Telescope image, we are able to see some of its structure, spiral arms, clusters of young blue stars. And this adjunct galaxy is even further, about a billion light years away, and some structure is still visible. Today it's possible thanks to modern telescopes that have high resolution, and also to the fact that digital sensors allow us to collect light for tens of hours or even days. Even amateur astronomers can look as deep as hundreds of millions of light years into the universe. That, for instance, is an image that my friend made, and here we can see Stefan Squinted, a famous group of five galaxies that is 300 million light years away. And that's the HST image of those five galaxies. And now let's travel back in time. It's the year 1950. There is no observatories in space, telescopes have smaller apertures, and digital image sensors are years away. Photographic plates are used to create images of astronomical objects. Arthur Hogue is examining one such a plate and finds this. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to obtain the original image, but this photo, or this one, allows us to at least somewhat picture what he saw 70 years ago. A ring with a bright spot in its center. Hoag suggested that the object could be a planetary nebula, a gas shell ejected from a red giant, an end phase for a sun-like star. It's not surprising that he thought of that. After all, that's Hoag's object, and that's an image of a planetary nebula made with an 8-inch telescope. Looks quite similar. It is always interesting to find an original discovery article, especially if it was made decades ago. I have found the original piece in the Astronomical Journal. Here Hoke compared it to a planetary nebula. Also, there is another idea that it might be a gravitational lensing effect similar to Einstein ring. When a background object, a galaxy for example, is distorted in a way that it looks like a ring. And finally, he suggested that the object could be an unusual type of a galaxy. And now when we have modern telescopes, we can look at the object in all its beauty. That's a Hubble Space Telescope image. So, what is this? A galactic hole 9000? Or perhaps the eye of the universe? But in all seriousness, we can see an almost perfect ring dominated by clusters of blue stars. Then, the vast emptiness. Something might still be there, it's just too dim to be visible. And then, a bright yellow nucleus of mostly old stars in the middle. Now, it's quite clear that's some sort of a peculiar galaxy. So, hoax object is a galaxy which is about 600 million light years away from the Earth. It's about 120,000 light years across, which is comparable with the Milky Way. It is located over here in the sky in the constellation of serpents. One might think, yeah, the object looks interesting, but there are so many galaxies in the universe. There could be all kinds of shapes, couldn't there? But in spite of the fact that there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe, on the very basic level there are only a few distinct shapes. This is a Hubble's old classification. And this is an expanded version. The main types of galaxies based on their morphology are spirals, barred spirals, our Milky Way is one of those, ellipticals and irregular galaxies. There is also an intermediate type of lenticular galaxies. Of course, there are a lot of subtypes, but still, it is obvious that among all of those billions of galaxies, in general, there is not so much variety. But Hoag's object doesn't look like any of those I've just mentioned. Are there any galaxies similar to Hoag's object? As weird as it is, we don't have to look that far. What is this? Yes, it's another galaxy of a similar shape that is called this, and located farther away. It's quite a coincidence. Such galaxies are very rare, and yet we can see a second one through the gap of the first one. And there are other ring galaxies. The first one was discovered in 1941 by Fritz Zwicky. It's a famous cartwheel galaxy, and here it's on the right. That's another example, a galaxy AM 0644741. And this is NGC 6028. 
In my previous video on globular clusters, I mentioned two common shapes in the universe – spheres and flat disks. I also briefly talked about how elliptical and spiral galaxies form, but how could a ring galaxy form? Well, not all of them are the same, and it's obvious even from the images that I've already shown. Some have quite regular circular shape with a core in the center. Others are elongated and the core is off-center, and also with a somewhat knotty ring. And there are so-called polar ring galaxies. They got rings perpendicular to a host galaxy rotation axis. A famous example is NGC 4650A. This is the HST image. Here is the central part, which is basically a lenticular galaxy. And here is the ring of stars, gas and dust, which is almost perpendicular. These galaxies are very rare. Only about a hundred of them are known, and there are some more candidates. So, there is some variety among ring galaxies. That means that different processes could be responsible for their formation. There are several main theories, and the first one is collision of galaxies. Cartwheel galaxy is a good example of that. Perhaps there was a head-on collision of a smaller galaxy with a larger spiral. Probably one of those two is to blame. The collision created a shockwave similar to rings on water. The ring contains about a billion young blue stars and they couldn't have formed that quickly under normal conditions. That's a numerical simulation of a similar collision in a different galaxy, which allows us to see how the ring could have formed. Also, there could be rings without a visible central part like this object R147. Rings could also form without interaction with other galaxies. For instance, they could be a result of Lindblad resonance that can be created by galactic bars. And because of the resonance, material forms a ring. And it can be a result of a bar instability, when the bar disrupts the internal structure of a galaxy and then rings form. These scenarios could explain ring galaxies that don't have visible nearby companions and that couldn't have taken part in the collision in the past. Another option is accretion, when a galaxy accretes matter from intergalactic medium or another galaxy and creates a ring. That could explain polar ring galaxies, but they also could be a result of collisions. Here we can see several examples of ring galaxies of supposedly different formation process – resonance, accretion, collision and, separately, polar ring galaxies. I also should mention that what we see now in those images is temporary, and galaxies might lose their ring structure in future. But Hoag's object is unique. Not a single known ring galaxy is that symmetrical. Even the most similar galaxies still have some remnants of spiral structure, or a core is more elliptical, or it still has a bar. How such a regular shape came to life is still a mystery. Since Hoag's discovery, every now and then new theories emerged, and later they were discarded. But anyway, that allowed us to make some constraints. In 1987, Francois Schweizer, with a group of astronomers, gathered data with Arecibo Radio Observatory as well as optical data, which showed that the ring and the core had the same redshift, which meant they are the same distance from Earth, and they also had the same angular velocity. That meant that both the ring and the core are parts of the same object, and this also ruled out one of the first ideas that it's just an Einstein ring. Also, their data showed that the ring and the core were rotating in the same direction. And taking into account the fact that there were no observable companion galaxies nearby, it seemed that collision scenario was not an option. In 1985, Noah Borsch suggested that bar instability might have been involved, and that could explain ring structure without a collision. The problem was that in that case, the core should have been much flatter than it actually was. Then there was an attempt to explain Hoag's object with the accretion scenario. What if galaxies didn't collide, but rather the host galaxy accreted some mass from another one? That matter could have formed a ring, and the lack of any visible remnants of that, such as tidal tails, might mean that it happened at least two or three billion years ago. Scientists are still trying to understand the nature of Hoag's object. They also use modern computer models, including those that involve deep learning. There are some more recent articles. 
For instance, this one tells us about the ring of neutral atomic hydrogen that extends far beyond the optical ring. Properties of that ring imply that there hasn't been any major accretion events for at least one or two billions of years, so probably it happened much earlier. There is another research based on HST and Russian telescope BTA data where scientists offer another formation theory. The core of Hoag's object looks very much just like an elliptical galaxy. At first, 10 billion years ago, an elliptical galaxy might have formed, and a little later, it accreted gas from the intergalactic medium, and that created the disk of neutral atomic hydrogen. But, of course, further research is needed. We still don't know exactly how Hoag's object formed, but thanks to decades of research and work of scientists, we understand it much better. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!